Quinlan was here. Yeah, he helps now. <gasps> Smuggling Whoa. younglings. The Vosses are back yes! in Star Wars! Yes, we got a Voss back. Only when the eyes are closed. Just read it so I don't have to translate. Yeah. <laughs> Quinlan with the wisdom. The way. Deep. Quinlan goes deep. This is the way. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> oh, shit. I just, it's so Boys. weird seeing Obi-Wan weak like that. Or, or just yeah, not power. Agreed. Oh, damn. Ah! Fire. You will suffer. Oh. <gasps> oh. Oh, oh damn. my god. Oh my god, you can't burn him! He's gonna look like Alec Guinness in a couple years! Yeah. Your pain has just That's gonna take a lot of back to. Welcome back to New Rockstars. Darth Vader just unleashed some fiery payback on Obi-Wan Kenobi. Thankfully, he didn't go for the face, but don't call this war criminal merciful because he just murdered a row of innocent Mapusa bystanders. What have you unleashed upon the galaxy, Kenobi? We forgot to do that last week at I Celebration. Know, we were too Maybe we didn't excited. want to wake up the, the hotel people who were staring down at us like, who are these two idiots That's on a right. bench talking about <laughs> Spoiling this episode. Yes. Well, this is Wookie Leaks. It's our weekly Obi Wan Kenobi after show here at New Rock Stars. And god damn, it's a great time to be a Star Wars yes. fan. I'm here with Tommy Bechtold. We're back in the Blue Dungeon after an unforgettable weekend at Star Wars what Celebration. An Good to see you again, Tommy. Incredible weekend. You know, it was yeah. for, for months we were starved. Starved for content. <laughs> Long have I waited. But, uh,. <laughs> All of a sudden, a, t a dam burst, and we were washed away in the in the majesty of a galaxy far, far away. And here we are now, halfway through Kenobi already. Can you believe that? I know the season's going by too fast. Yeah. They go I get up that so they, fast. They 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 pitch this as like a. I think I, I know Obi Wan Kenobi was meant to be a movie, mm -hmm. and they're calling these episodes part one, part two, part three. So yeah. this feels like we're we're watching just like I don't know a six hour movie yeah. or a five hour movie, but that's moving too fast for me. I, yeah, I, I need two seasons. Why can't they give Obi Wan Kenobi twelve episodes and twelve episodes yeah. like they do for Andor? Give well, it a second season. We'll get some Kamorbi. Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> well, I have said it once, Tommy. I'll I'm say it again. I'm Kasari. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's too early for that. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's an exciting week here after this episode because mm -hmm. Vosses are once again Star Wars canon with the name drop of Quinlan Voss. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about who this Jedi survivor is, why it's a huge deal that he's alive, and what it tells us about the state of the Jedi right now, yeah. uh, as well as talking about all your big questions coming out of this episode. Quick recap of what happens. Obi-Wan meditates on his memories from Revenge of the Sith and the other prequels as Vader goes through his morning routine. But whereas our man Boba Fett left a back to bath every morning to wrap himself in a nice cozy bathrobe, Vader's suit seems a bit more pokey. Mm. Ouch. Does not seem like a comfortable way to start your day. No. Yeah, rise and grind, Vader. Uh, the only thing he'll be grinding are bones. Yes. James Earl Jones returns Back. to voice Vader from and, behind uh, the mask. Uh, what an amazing amount of like, worry amongst Star Wars fans. We're like, what's he going to sound like? It's like, of course he's going to sound like James Earl Jones. I mean, yeah. I up until we actually heard his voice, I was like, they're not going to do something weird, are they? They're not going to do something. They right. wouldn't do something weird, would they? They wouldn't do they something wouldn't. weird. It, it, it's so wonderful just to hear James yeah. Earl Jones. And man, despite however old that guy gets, yeah. the voice modulation they're able to do on him yeah. to make him sound just as like clear and uh, a machine mm -hmm. as he did in the original trilogy. He sounds just as he does yes. in A New Hope and in, in Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back. So it's so, just so great to hear him again. Uh, but we'll talk about like this balance between James Earl Jones and Hayden Christensen's, uh, the, their contributions to mm -hmm. the character we're seeing in this episode, a bit later this episode. But uh, from Vader's castle on Mustafar, uh, he, he compliments the third sister and then charges her with finding Obi-Wan, offering her the position of Grand Inquisitor or killing her if she fails. Mm. The stakes are pretty high. Yes. The stakes are pretty high. There's really no middle ground there. 
So on the Fortress Inquisitorius on the ocean world of Nur, uh, the fifth brother, the fourth sister, clearly despise the third sister. We finally get a sense of the rivalry between them, the ambition among them all, because the fifth brother considers the rank of Grand Inquisitor his. I have a lot of questions about the, the actual order of succession and how they get their numerical designations and what the hell is really going on with the Grand Inquisitor. Mm. Are we seeing a retcon here? We, we should talk about that a little yeah. bit later. Right. I still think we I still don't think we've seen the last of him. And this may be one of those things where I after episode six, I'm like, I still don't think we've seen the last of him. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to I maintain by by the end of episode five, the Inquisitor will be back for an epic finale. Let's 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 hope so. Right. Um, so Obi-Wan and Leia flee to Mapuzo, which is a mid-rim planet that's turned into a mining colony that's stripped for vitrium. Uh, Haja's coordinates actually lead them to a remote spot. Uh, where no one meets them there, so they get a lift uh, by Freck, a driver you know you cannot trust because he's voiced by Zach Braff. That's right. Ugh. Can't Bra trust him. Braff. Uh, Obi-Wan Obi -Wan and Leia claim to be farmers from Tall. They're almost outed when Obi-Wan calls Leia instead of the fake name Luma, mm -hmm. calls her Leia. That's a smart stormtrooper for picking up on that. Mm -hmm. But Obi-Wan's able to do a nice little adjustment there and say that Leia was her mother's name. And that he, you know, he sees her uh, getting this uh, nice little moment where he's clearly grieving over Padme. Uh, two episodes in a row where we get to see, like, Obi-Wan's grief over Padme. Something yeah. that, you know, I didn't think that would bother him too much. But, of course, it bothers him. Kind this is someone who's very close to him. I don't, hey, listen, I don't like to be a town gossip. And I don't like to be, you know, a, a stirrer of the pot. But lends a little credence to Anakin's concerns that maybe Obi-Wan had feelings for Padme that were stronger than he revealed. You know, he seems to really have some some nostalgia and some uh, some 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 yearning for the old Padme. Yes. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I think you know, all these years, Anakin's been vilified for a couple whoops of daisies. You know, a few a small couple whoops of daisies. <laughs> Tell that to the younglings in the training room on yeah. the temple. Come on, Tom. <laughs> this is why I'd be a great politician because a little <laughs> bit of time passes and I'm able to say, like, look. Has everyone, we've all made mistakes. Let's not throw glass lightsabers or throw lightsabers in our glass houses. <laughs> glass lightsabers. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, clearly he has a lot of affection for Padme. I think his one true love was Satine. Uh, but I think you make a good point that that, that friendship between Obi-Wan and Padme was something that Anakin felt threatened by. Um, and uh, we learned that Obi-Wan... Uh, he has vague memories of his own family, mm. uh, including the fact that he had a brother, mm. which I find very interesting. Yeah. Uh, something that might come up in the future. Uh, but then frickin' Freck turns them in, and Obi-Wan takes out a probe droid. He causes a stormtrooper to slice in half. Yikes. Yeah. And uh, I believe one of the stormtroopers in the scene is a, a guy we know from the L.A. comedy scene, Shane Hartline. Yes, he got, allegedly. Uh, he yes, a role I, on the show. And not allegedly. According to, according to social credits, media, yeah. Shane Hartline plays a stormtrooper. Congratulations, yeah, good Shane. good on you, Shane. Good for you, dude. And a boy. And then uh, Indira Varma shows up as an Imperial officer, but actually a rebel in disguise. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's officially a rebel, just someone who's helping out the Jedi get yeah. the free uh, passage, safe passage. Tala is her name. She takes them to her Jedi safe house, where she says that they smuggle Jedi runaways and younglings to the planet of Jabin. And Obi-Wan reads all their little, like, you know, so-and-so was here. Uh, Tommy loves Eric. You know these yes. little carvings, and, and, these yearbook and, and signs. Big, big thank you to 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 Deborah Cho for putting in that that little Easter egg that I wanted uh, of Tommy loves Eric. So I really appreciate yeah. her including that. It only cost me six million dollars uh, to to get in there. Yeah. So stay tuned. Yeah, uh, you see all the comedians who uh, who uh, performed in that weird droid junk shop. You yeah. know, like uh, Bill Burr carved yeah. in his name. <laughs> Uh, they all signed Margaret the show carved in her name over <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Rosie O'Donnell was there. Uh, weirdly, Bill Cosby's there. And everyone feels reason. weird about yeah. it. No. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, all the comedians who have been on this show. Yeah. Kamal Jihani is over there. Kevin yeah. Dorf, all of them. Um, but he sees a name in the quote from Quinlan Voss, yes. a very important Jedi. We're going to talk about in just a bit uh, who he is, why he's important. But then Vader shows up and he just begins force choking the hell oh out God. of everyone. And it's pretty hard to watch. Yeah. Um, and then he en engages Obi-Wan in a mineral field, and he tells Obi-Wan, I am what you made me. And they duel. Uh, but Obi-Wan is quickly outmatched. Like, he doesn't even get a single good no. blow or a single good moment. He is 
weak as hell. Uh, he's completely overwhelmed, getting thrown around like a rag doll. I mean, just get this guy out of there. It's yeah. it's not going to go well. It's like watching when Mike Tyson made his comeback and they had him basically fight like human mannequins. And they were like, he'd just like get in the ring and like punch the guy twice. And then the guy's trainer would throw in the towel and be like, get him out of there! Get him out of there! <laughs> uh, so uh, Vader force chokes him, uh, causes him to drop his lightsaber, and then drags the guy across some fiery coals. Mm -hmm. And this is brutal. But luckily, our, you know, our man Ewan McGregor, his salt and pepper beard doesn't turn to ash. Because I don't think we could handle that. No, we, no, no, no. We can't see any. There's no... There, I didn't remember seeing any major burn scars on him as Alec Guinness, but Although you know, he's very buttoned up covered. and he does wear that cloak. Yeah, we don't see him in a, in a tank the way I wish we could. You know, just like oh, a nice yeah. thin tank top and some chubby shorts. <laughs> um, before Vader can fully seize him, there's an interesting moment where Vader throws him out of the fire. Mm. Like he spares him. He doesn't want to kill him yet. I presume for interrogation purposes, yeah. like. He, the guy has his eye on the full mission overall. There's still a lot of Jedi out there, and Obi-Wan might know where others it, are. He says the line, uh, like, you're, 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 like you're, you're, today you don't die, or you're not dying yet, or something, like, almost implying like he has more torture he wants to do, too. Like, yeah. He's like, I, I didn't get to die when you right. severely maimed me. So you don't get to die either. I'm going to maim you right. first. Yes, this fire phase is just phase one. I have phases based on all the elements. A 17-part revenge. Yeah. Then I will be burying you in earth up to your neck as uh, weird little scurriers scratch your face. And then next I'm going to put you in my weird soup machine and they're just going to poke you with stuff. It's yeah. going to be wild. Phase four um, is an all-expense-paid trip to Endor where we'll enjoy fabulous <laughs> cocktails served to us by tiny little Ewoks. Phase five is back to torture. Back to torture. I'm taking you to that Coruscant Opera House. That show sucked. And the <laughs> only cool part was when Palpatine told me all about his cool Sith history. Yes. But you're just going to have to watch the opera. <laughs> and then <laughs> before Vader can take him on that delightful torture uh, parade, uh, Tala blows a generator that reignites the fire that allows her loader droid to sneak in there and drag him to safety. And I just love how these stormtroopers storm troopers are like, oh, fire bad. Yeah. We, uh, we can't just go around this. Uh, fire, I can't see anything on the other side. It seems like Vader lets him go in yeah. that moment. It's like, I feel like Vader could do a forced leap over that Absolutely. fire to get him and take him out. Like that felt like kind of like, Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that some was some really good. Show. Some really good c credit to the uh, ADR post post audio team to throw in some stormtroopers going. There's no way around. We can't get around. <laughs> like just a for because all of us watching are like, can't you just walk ten feet to the right or left and go yeah. around this little patch of fire? But they made sure to let us know that the stormtroopers, who are you know always the bastions of intelligence and street smarts, were unable to figure out a way to get over. So. I think you heard one stormtrooper say, maybe it was even Shane. Our man yeah. Shane might have said, wow, these flames are so high, even Master Vader couldn't jump over it. Yes. I, I'm pretty sure that was yeah. a line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Leia flees through a tunnel, but ends up at the feet of the third sister. Uh-oh, it was all for nothing. Oh, no. Um, so in this episode of Wookiee Leaks, we're going to talk about Quinlan Voss, the planet Beam. The Inquisitor succession, whether Star Wars is retconning rebels with the Grand Inquisitor. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Obi-Wan's brother and whether we're really getting enough hate in mm -hmm. as this version of, of Vader. I want to I want to talk to you about that, Tommy. Yeah. But be sure to check out the newest, latest Obsession shirt released by our merch partners at Epic Hero Shop. It's called Empire's Most Wanted. It is inspired by the Obi-Wan series. Once this limited edition shirt is sold out, it is gone for good. So do not miss out on your opportunity to grab this limited edition merch. And when you get a latest obsession shirt, you will unlock the ability to write in a custom shout out message that will appear right here in WikiLeaks. What do we have today? We have Meredith who says, do you think we will see anyone from the Ghost Crew in Andor? Mm. If so, who? Love you guys 3000. Thank you for your question, Meredith. Uh, I believe we're going to see everyone from the Ghost Crew in Ahsoka for yeah. sure. Yeah. The timeline is there though for, for Andor. I mean, some like... Harrison Dula, maybe? Yeah. Um, I just don't know if we're going to see any Jedi. I don't know if we'd see, like, Kanan uh, or yeah. a young, young Ezra. I mean, would Ezra, Ezra would be very, very young on Andor, right? Yeah. So, um, or not that young, right? If it's five, we're talking about the the start of, uh, of when Rebels begins. I just don't think we're going to see... We might I get feel like they're setting them. them up for Ahsoka. I don't, it would seem weird to yeah. 
have them. Because they're trying, I think, with Andor to establish, like, a different side of this fight that you haven't seen, right? Like, we're, we're showing yeah. different characters and what they were doing during this whole rebellion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Matthew asks, do you think we will see the Wookiee Kersantan in this series? If so, would he be sent by uh, Reva or Vader? You know, I the only way I think we would see Black Kersantan is if they restaged that moment with him and Uncle Owen and Luke back on Tatooine. And I don't know if this show is going to return to Tatooine. Maybe at the mm. ending, yeah. like we find, like the final shot might be Obi-Wan back in his Tatooine home changed. But I don't. I don't think we're going to see... I'd be surprised if we saw Black Crusade at this point. I feel like that window is past. I, yeah, I, I also think, for me, I I kind of hope we don't in this. I, I don't know that, like, for that character, it makes sense to bring him back to when he was, like, you know, just, just like, pure fighting, killing, you know? Like, what, like you know, yeah. I think, like, we've already seen him kind of come over to the good side, quote-unquote, on... Book of Boba Fett, albeit as a, you know, kind of a mercenary. It's like, mm. I don't know that I necessarily am like, well, let's just see him when he's hard. It's be hard to understand for for, you, for yeah. younger viewers, I think, if he's all of a sudden just, you know, trying to kill Obi-Wan or something. But Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I people just fight all the time, and he seems like a bad boy. So I think we could yeah. get by with that. I just feel like at this point, the series seems to have moved on yeah. from, from where that would happen. Yeah. Uh, Alex asks, do you think Obi-Wan will communicate with Yoda in this series? It seems like he kind of is, or at least like yeah. remembering Yoda telling him, hey, don't watch these security tapes. It's going to be violent. Uh, but I I think at this point, if he can talk to Master Qui-Gon's Force Ghost, I believe he should be able to uh, chat with Yoda mm -hmm. from across the galaxy, mm -hmm. from wherever he is to Dagobah. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's very possible. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I'm I'm holding out for more hope that uh yes. that it would be Liam Neeson though. Or would you say you have cause. a new hope? Mm, no, it's the same old hope. I have one hope, okay, and it just shape shifts into whatever I need it to be. I have a hope chest and it's full of lockets. <laughs> but just your face and no one else on the other just side. Just one one side with my face and just a question mark on the other side. <laughs> Someday my princess will come. <laughs> well, you can find all of our awesome merch options over at NewRockStarsMerch.com. All right, Tommy, what's our lead question coming out of this episode? Okay, Eric, this is big for you. Who is Quinlan Voss? Well, Quinlan Voss is a relative. He's kin, so yes. be careful what you say about him. Whoa. No, uh, Quinlan Voss, with one S, is a Jedi long believed to have survived Order 66, but now it is confirmed. I'm now wondering if Quinlan Voss might actually be the character played by O'Shea Jackson Jr. Nice. We'll see. Maybe he could be someone else. I think mm. that'd be some fun casting if that's indeed who he is. But uh, he first appeared actually in Phantom Menace before he even had the name Quinlan Voss. He was sitting in the background of Moss Espa, just kind of watching Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan with Jar Jar, being mm. like, what are they doing? But uh, he was really just a hooded figure with a yellow stripe painted across his face. But fans were so fascinated by this guy that uh, the Lucas story team gave him a whole identity and backstory, as they do for so many yes. characters. Uh, and he appeared in various expanded universe, uh, rather, legend stories, like Star Wars Republic, and George Lucas liked him so much from that storyline that he included him in the script for Revenge of the Sith. He was meant to be on uh, in the Battle of Kashyyyk, um, where Yoda and Luminar and Dooley were. Uh, he was going to be like uh, riding a, a Republic tank, mm. um, but that was not in this, like it was never actually shot mm. for the movie, but it is in the original script for it. Um, and uh, the scene was cut, but Kenobi actually does bring him up uh, in dialogue later at a different point in the movie, telling Anakin, Master Voss, has moved his troops to pause uh, to Boz pity. And I remember when I watched that with my friends in 2005 and they said, Master Voss, all my friends were like, ah, and they grabbed me. And I was like, I know, I know, I know. We did I was it. so excited. You're like, that's me. <laughs> that's me. I'm in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, well, Quinlan actually appeared in one episode of Clone Wars, mm. the season three episode Hunt for Zero. His role was meant to be expanded in eight more episodes, but the series was canceled before those were ever shot. Mm. But that arc, that planned arc, formed the basis of the 2015 novel Dark Disciple by Christy Golden. It's a really, really great book that explores Quinlan's romantic relationship with Asajj Ventress, mm. Dooku's former apprentice, who's a major, major villain in the Clone Wars series. Yes. A fascinating character. Um, so uh, Quinlan Voss was confirmed to have survived Order 66 because uh, the Charles Soule 2017 Darth Vader comics that the series is pulling so much of its Inquisitor lore from 
listed Quinlan Vos's name among other surviving Jedi that the Inquisitors were still hunting. Mm. And then later in that series, on Mon Cala, Jedi Farron Barr mentions Quinlan Vos as a possible Jedi survivor that they can turn to for help. So those clues plus this now confirm that the guy's still alive and he's still helping Jedi out in uh, the galaxy in these post-Order 66 years. Yes. Now, a bit about Quinlan, he's known for psychometry. That's the ability to sense the memories of other beings uh, by touching objects that they had come into contact with. We actually saw a visual example of this with Rey in Luke's lightsaber in The Force Awakens. Um, and uh, so Tala indicates that Quinlan is smuggling younglings to the planet Jabin, where they're given new identities since the Empire is now hunting both Jedi and just Force-sensitive kids. Mm. This could be a continuation of Palpatine's Project Harvester in Clone Wars. Remember that? That's when he used Cad Bane to kidnap all these Force-sensitive babies in order to uh, build a Sith army, a project that you could say led to the creation of the Inquisitors mm. by Palpatine uh, when, uh, before he handed that team off to Vader. So uh, Jabim is actually a planet from those same uh, Republic comics. And those comics are considered legends, you know, non-canon. Mm. But uh, the planet Jabim did get mentions in the Clone Wars novelization, the uh, Revenge of the Sith uh, novelization, and it is mentioned in these Empire comics. So during the Clone Wars era, it's, you know, it's described as a rainy, muddy mining planet that joins the Separatists, the Empire comics, use it as a setting during uh, the Galactic Civil War, which actually would be set years after the series. Mm. Um, so hopefully we see this planet. It's, you know, a really, really cool location. Hopefully yeah. that's where they're headed next. Um, but it may be unrelated, but Tommy and I were able to see that uh, exclusive Ahsoka footage at Celebration yes. and showed a quick shot of Hu Yang, which I just think is very interesting because he is the architect droid who is on the Jedi ship called the Crucible who uh, his job was to train Jedi younglings. Mm. So if Hu Yang survived, some of those Jedi younglings may have also survived. Mm. And Quinlan could be part of the network that helps get those kids to a new safe life and yeah. new safe identities. Um, so I'm so excited to see Quinlan be in charge of this operation. Uh, and it was interesting how Obi-Wan read this quote that said, only when the eyes are closed can you truly see? And Leia asks, see what? And he goes, the way. And if you look at the closed captioning, way is capitalized. Mm. Uh, now, that could be referring to the way, right? Uh, the Like the Jedi way, the path. Um, and the, the fact that you cannot be looking at it. You have to meditate. You have to be a bit blind to see the path, right? As Obi-Wan is now in the blind. He doesn't know what's ahead. Right. He can't project the future. All the Jedi are blind. Right. And that harkens back to, uh, you know, the Jedi orthodoxy of like blinding their uh, their Padawans, their apprentices, as they try to use the force to sense things. Mm. Right. As Luke had to wear the blind helmet uh, on the Millennium Falcon. Um, but the fact that he says the way it's just hard not to see it as a parallel to the watch. Mm -hmm. This is the way, you know. Yep. Uh, and the exclusive Mandalorian season three footage that we saw at Star Wars Celebration showed Bo-Katan telling Mando that his cult abandoned Mandalore long before the Purge. And we don't know exactly how his watch cult started. We know that it was derived from the Death Watch, but it's a mm. different group of Mandalorians right. than the ones that we start with in the Mandalorian series. I'm wondering, and I'm totally reaching here. I'm just saying there could be a link here. Mm. Uh, Quinlan Voss smuggling unknowing Force-sensitive kids to safety Telling them, hide yourself, as Obi-Wan told uh, uh, Benny Safdie's Jedi character. Mm -hmm. Like, forever mask yourself. And that might be why, again, I'm reaching, I know, this could be why these Mandalorian foundlings with the watch mask themselves with Beskar and right. are not allowed to take off their helmets. That could be uh, young Force-sensitive kids who don't realize they're Force-sensitive. Uh, and why they are so cult-like and devout uh, in their approach to the Mandalorian Ooh. way of life. Uh, these could be these escaped Jedi foundlings uh, who Quinlan Voss gets to save passage to the armor. And now maybe that could be why the Darksaber it's found, has found itself to Din Djarin's hands. Because the Darksaber was created by the original Mandalorian Jedi. Again, I'm reaching. That's just where my mind is going right now. I maybe think it's that completely is, unrelated. you are blowing, you blew my mind. That is incredible. I love that. I really want that to be what happened. <laughs> I want Din Djarin to be force sensitive. I want him to be a force sensitive little boy. And I want. I, I know a lot of people are going to say, like, it's better when people are not force sensitive because they kind of hate it when, like, so many people are force sensitive. I get that. It could it could just be like he was part of that same operation. He ended up not really having or his midichlorians are like, no, they deactivated or something or no. they weren't. 
but I, I, I think that could be part of the same operation. All I'm just right. That. Well, I love that theory, Eric, and I hope that anyone that's going to be negative about it trips and stubs their toe on a coffee table today <laughs> with my powers of the force. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think like that could be why the uh, the armor was just trying to stamp out. Like she seems so anti Jedi, right? Yeah. Like oh, she. Yeah. She calls them like culty wizards. Yeah. Uh, and she's part of her own cult. Right. Right. So that might be why, like, she's just trying to make sure the members of uh, the watch survive. Um, mm -mm. Um, but this wouldn't be all the members of the watch, right? So we have, we have uh, Paz Vizla, who's just a member of House Vizla, who ended up joining this watch. I think some of the people they adopt maybe could be part of this Quinlan Voss mm. uh, network. But another obvious path for, for Quinlan Voss is just like there could be some colony out there. Of, yeah. of Jedi who, who were able to survive. Um, do you think it's more likely that there is like a witness protection program that just scatters them across I the galaxy? I feel like that's way more. I mean, like the idea of putting them all in a colony to me seems like making them sitting ducks again. Like, <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, I just, I'm just saying the way my brain from watching crime dramas works, you know, I don't necessarily know that the Star Wars, it's more fun in the Star Wars universe if there's just this like, cool outdoor community where like young force sensitive kids are like leaping over the monkey bars instead of climbing them. Like, you know, I'd rather mm -hmm. that happen, but you know. A, a Xavier school for gifted young Exactly. Uh, yeah, you know. I just wonder like, you know, if they are just hunting force sensitive kids and if they have any kind of holocron that can identify force sensitive kids, mm -hmm. are, are they more protected, scattered the way Leia and Luke are? Or are they right. more protected like with, uh, in some kind of group home? It's a good question. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. I mean, to do it the scattered way, you kind of need to assign them a chaperone. Like each one kind of needs an older Jedi to then also take on a new identity and hide out. <laughs> like we saw yeah. what happened with Leia. A rule of two, you might say. Yeah. Oh. A master and an apprentice. Wait a second. <laughs> Wait, we've tried that. Um, hey, yeah, they can't I, fail a second time. I just want to know why they're going to Jabim. Like Jabim's kind of a shithole. It's yeah. just a muddy... Uh, like muddy, gross mining uh, I hope, town. I hope we get more planet. frog people. You know, frogs <laughs> love mud. <laughs> I love mud. I'm a pig and shit in mud. Um, okay, there's a lot more to talk about coming out of this episode, but we want to remind you all that New Rockstars is on Tumblr. Whether you're new to Tumblr or a longtime user, be sure to check out the official New Rockstars Tumblr page. All this month, we're going to be talking about the Miss Marvel series launched on Disney+, Plus. so be sure to stop on by and uh, check out our Tumblr page. Oh, yeah. Also, big announcement here, The Boys Underground, our weekly show, our weekly after show for The Boys on Amazon, uh, returns this week with the premiere of the first three episodes. And it's going to be hosted by our man, Tom Bechtel. Bam, back Jessica in the Clemens, underground. And special guests every week. Yeah. And it's going to come out, I believe, on Fridays. Uh, sometime Friday, midday, Friday afternoon. So uh, be sure to check out Boys Underground right here on New Rockstar's YouTube channel. You can also subscribe, I believe, to uh, Boys Underground wherever you get your podcasts. Mm. So I'm very excited. Uh, we can't wait. Jessica and I are already scheming, plotting. All right, Tommy, let's talk about the Inquisitors this episode. Mm -hmm. It seems like the Grand Inquisitor is being treated as dead or at least incapacitated. Yeah. Is this show straight up retconning the Grand Inquisitor from I, uh, him being alive in Rebels? I mean, it just depends because there is a part that of lo like logic from what we know from Jedis or, or Sith or people that have the power of the Force and have harnessed it. They'd be able to sense if he was still alive, right? Like there would be a part like, I think only Vader knows the truth. I think only Vader knows the reality. I think, you know, Darth Vader is, he's treacherous. And I mean, we have mo uh, and it's mov movie after movie of him being treacherous. It's not without uh, possibility that he's telling the third sister all of these things to get what he wants from her, all while healing the Grand Inquisitor in another room. You know what I mean? Like, and being like, don't worry, we will, we will strike back and like, you know, we'll get you right back in, you know, when we need you most. Because I could see this ending up being something where, like, the third Inquisitor, Reva, ends up on her own little thing. Like, it ends up being Vader, Grand Inquisitor, Obi-Wan, mm -hmm. and Reva. And, like, a, you know, a triangle of conflict uh, mm -hmm. because Reva doesn't really obey. She's rebellious and she, you know, she doesn't follow orders. She does whatever she wants. 
So yeah, she goes rogue. She did it this episode. She right. went rogue from Vader, and she right. kind of went off on her own. But so, she's successful. That's yeah. you can't take that away from her. Absolutely not. And I, I, I'm. The, it's not a criticism of the character. I just, I could see it becoming something where like it's a different adversary. You know what I mean? Like she's no longer mm. working as an inquisitor. She's now just working as someone bent on vengeance. So yeah, let let's game this out. Like how they could still stay true to the canonical. Uh, yeah. uh, continuity of the Grand Inquisitor and Rebels. So, like, Reva would have to fail uh, or be, or just kind of go rogue mm -hmm. uh, or, like, turn against Vader and disappear and escape his wrath. And then the Grand Inquisitor would have to be reinstated in power. But he seems to be, like, super weak. If he is yeah. alive, he's on life support right. or he's, like, in a Bacta tank somewhere. Right. Uh, it'd just be weird to incapacitate him for these middle episodes. Mm just to restore him at the end of the series. Like, yeah. is that an interesting story for the character? Like, I don't know. Maybe it'll just be simpler next episode or in the three episodes ahead. Well, it's just like yeah. a very weird move to do this. I, I, I hope it's not the last episode. I hope it's either next episode or the fifth episode and we get him for two more, at least. But Yeah. Well, it's just power status-wise. It's right. weird for Reva to still stay as powerful as she is mm -hmm. and then bring the Grand Inquisitor back. Like, sure. Like, the guy's gonna be like uh, the coach in winning time who hits his head after a bike ride. You right, know? Like, right, right. He comes back in the scene and they're like, mm, just, just retire, just retire. Well, I, like, I think it can only happen if Reva is pushed out. You know, like if Vader is right. like, you disobeyed, you're out. She has to be seen as a usurper, and right. all the Inquisitors view her as an as a And I think they already, and, I mean, the sentiment against her is already fairly negative, right? Like we do seem to be yeah. heading towards that, but you know. In the, I mean, yeah. the Empire, historically, like, there's a lot of people inside plotting to betray each other to rise up. Like, it's not, it's not exactly an ethical organization, I would say. Yeah. I think, I mean, look, Star Wars has um, retconned things before. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, the Lucasfilm team has changed certain things about uh, whether Han shot first. Right. Um, they, uh, it's just, it's not that common that in the Filoni era of Star Wars that we see these kind of retcons happening mm -hmm. to Filoni's own stuff. Like, Filoni was not an executive producer on this show, but he did get a special thanks in the credits. Right. And you better believe that he's at least consulting on the Star right, Wars lore. Right. And it's still, Pablo Hidalgo is consulting on mm -hmm. all the, the Star Wars continuity. So, mm -hmm. I, like, it'd be weird for him just to be like, yeah, kill off the Grand Inquisitor because right. I think all these people were also working on Rebels and know yeah. wh where the Grand Inquisitor's future is. I don't buy the argument that it's a different uh, Powen no. than this Grand... I think that would be a weird thing because in Star Wars Rebels is implied that that Powen that we saw in Star Wars Rebels Season 1 was the same one who came out of the Jedi Temple. Right. Um. So it'd be weird for this one on Obi Wan Kenobi to just be a different Grand Inquisitor powing. Yeah, like, it's I, just my weird. my my fear is that that moment was just meant to be a shocking like twist of like, oh, you thought the Grand Inquisitor was going to be this nefarious force, but no, he's actually dead, and it's it's the third sister, and 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 I and I and I'm and I'm somehow missing that, <laughs> you know, like I'm just. Yeah. Not taking it. If they do night. truly, if they do truly kill off the Grand Inquisitor on the show, this will be the biggest retcon that we've ever seen in this era of Star yeah, Wars. Absolutely. Like you can say that, like, oh well, Jango Fett was changed from being a Mandalorian or Mandalorian or not, you know, because Filoni said that Jango Fett wasn't uh, meant to be seen as a Mandalorian, but then uh, Mandalorian season two defined that he was right. from a Mandalorian uh, from Conqueror Dawn. Um, that I think is just something just for nerds. This right. is something that is straight up confusing for right. anyone who's watched Rebels. Right. You know. Yep. Um, so anyway, I guess we'll see. Maybe we're just like spending too much time on it. <laughs> um, let's talk about this question of Obi Wan's family. Yeah. Obi Wan's brother. Could we meet Obi Wan's brother in the future? And if so, would he be force sensitive? That's a great question. I mean, honestly, it's like he has memories that he had a brother. He says or glimpses. What he calls them more like flashes or whatever. They're not uh -huh. even memories anymore. I, I, it's tough to say again, like it would be really cool to have a, another Kenobi out there. <laughs> like there's just like, yeah. you know, and what, what is this person doing? I mean, he would be younger, right? He said he thought he had a younger brother. So it would be right. He remembers a baby. Yeah. I mean, look, most uh, Jedi are taken from when they're toddlers. Like they're, you know, when we met Anakin Skywalker mm -hmm. or the four, the Jedi high council met Anakin, he was nine and they're like, Oh, he's too old. Right. Which is, is like gross. gross. Very gross for them. 
Um, so they're taken when they're like three years old. So yeah. his memories would be kind of spotty from the sure, years. Of but, course, uh, yeah. Here's what I'll say. I like that this came up. I do not ever need to meet Obi-Wan's no, brother. I don't think so either. I To me, this is like... Oh, Dumbledore had a brother. Right. Or, yeah, I'm like, gonna age myself. Or Curly had a brother from right. City Slickers universe. Like, right. I don't, I don't need this. Curly had a brother Duke who looked this. just like him. But I, uh, yeah, I also think it's a bit of a like. It would be a bit of a like. Not and this is gonna age myself terribly, but you know, like a cousin Oliver addition to a sitcom where you're like, let's just keep adding family members to this show to like make it interesting instead of just adding new conflict to the existing characters. So, right. yeah, yeah, I like the mention. I like f- flushing out fleshing out Obi-Wan as a human or as a, you know, as a character who once had a family and went through the same trauma of being taken by the taken by the Jedi. I never need to hear about it again. Yeah. I, I leave that as a mystery. Leave yeah. that as much of a mystery as uh, Yoda's and Grogu's species yeah. is. It's He's out there somewhere. We never need to meet him. And then we can keep talking about him all as much as we want. Um, Okay. Let's talk about the way Vader was shown this episode. Uh, We briefly saw Hayden Christensen's face. We saw him both uh, his scarred head under the mask. We also saw this weird uh, apparition of him on one of the hills in Mapuzo. Yeah. uh, Just wearing a nice billowing Jedi cloak. Mm -hmm. Uh, Pretty creepy, to be honest with you. Um, But other than that, it was really just the voice of James Earl Jones, but I'm pretty sure that was Hayden Christensen in the suit doing all the physical work. Right. Uh, unless they wanted to bring in a stunt guy, but I think him like marching down that uh, that streetway yeah. on Mapuzo, I think he was using one choking. Well, people. they made the point to vicious. mention that he worked with a movement coach, right? As we covered on the break there you room go. yesterday. But uh, yeah. they, uh, so yeah, it would make sense. I mean, it's, I, I gave all credit to him for wanting to reprise that role and get in the suit, but it's like, if you're a fan of Hayden Christians in the actor, you're not getting a ton of like, you know, performance in terms of, you know, seeing his face and like, you know, you're getting a, you're getting a very, I guess, just a physical uh, recapturing yeah. of Vader, which is impressive in its own right. Yeah. I, I think it speaks to uh, what a good sport Hayden is no. for wanting to be part of this. Yeah. And obviously, yeah, they're bringing back uh, the character. And we have three more episodes to see of Vader. I'm just trying to think, like, practically what kind of scenes can we see with him? Yeah. We're, this show has given us two ways, or I guess really three ways you can see him, right? You can see him through flashback. Mm-hmm. You can see him scarred under the mask. But, like, mm-hmm. he's not going to be uh, maskless when he's out of the Bacta tank, right? And that's like a private chamber. It's really only yeah. him and his creepy little assistant, Vani. Right. Like, no one... Obi-Wan's not going to be in there. Right. Or uh so are we just going to see these weird apparitions that uh that Obi-Wan well, sees? Well, my thought is Obi-Wan? that the last time that they physically meet, Obi-Wan might debilitate him to the point where he does take his mask off. You know what I mean? And Obi-Wan once again has him against the robes, kind of like in the final in in Return of the Jedi when Vader requests Luke to take his mask off, but Obi-Wan Anakin's not requesting it. It just happens. And then Perhaps Obi-Wan takes mercy on him, puts the mask back. Mm. Like, he can't kill his friend. But, like, we get that. Oh, maybe. You know, that's the only... I mean, that's just me reaching for a way that that could happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they could show us a new way where we show, like, a super close-up of Hayden under the mask, right? right? Right. Like, in the Iron Man heads-up display. Yeah, Uh, But we haven't seen that yet on this series. Um, Yeah, I just... uh, I like that Hayden is part of this. I especially like his physical performance. Yeah. Um, so I will say it feels like Vader ultimately because yeah. you need James Earl Jones' voice mm-hmm. to come through the Absolutely. Vader mask. It just would not be the same. Absolutely. Um, but like I am, uh, part of the appeal for the show was like, hey, Hayden's coming back as a character, right. and I want to see Hayden's acting, like his face, his his emotional reaction right. to things, and I want to know like you had to bring Hayden back for this, right? And I want, I am hoping that the series gives us a few moments. Just a few moments where it's like, that's why they brought back here. Yep. You know? And yep. I don't think this episode gave us that yet. No, not yet. But we got time. Not yet. We have three more episodes, though. I can't wait to dig in them uh, into them. Because I'll say, like, this is a fascinating experience, oh, this yes. show. Uh, it, it, it feels like I'm dreaming right now. The fact that we're getting these actors back. And they're hanging out with young Leia. And they're mm-hmm. all in the same place. And this is Star Wars history mm-hmm. that we're seeing. And this is always part of the Star Wars story. And it's just being revealed to us. It's very, very exciting. Yeah. Um, but we'll leave it there for this episode of Wookie Leaks. The Easter egg breakdown will be coming out tomorrow on the show. 
Um, don't forget to check out our many great merch options over at newrockstarsmerch.com. Follow me at EA Voss, follow Tommy at Tommy Bechtold, follow New Rockstar, subscribe to Wookie Leaks, wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Bye.